And then what you just said was what was kind of the game changer for me, because you can take a suit from New York City and plop them down in Wyoming and have a conversation with a gentleman who's selling five million dollars worth of soybeans a year. And there ain't no conversation because he, he can't communicate with him. He's got nothing in common, doesn't know the vernacular to utilize, and doesn't even know how to communicate with the guy, right? Talks fast. He, uh, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. He just oh, goes yeah. – you've got team members that are boots on the ground. That's a game changer. It, it is. And like I said, it, from the very beginning, it all goes back to the customer. You know, and I think that that true customer service is, you know, that's something that's a fundamental that is lost this day and age with a lot of businesses. And that's something we really wanted to bring back because if you brought that suit or anybody that tries to read a script to a farmer, they're going to see you a mile away. And like the trust is already gone. The the familiarity is already gone. And that's not what we wanted. And if you want to make a real impact, you need to be able to relate to who it is you're working with and working for. hundred percent. And, and, you know, you mentioned impact. What is it that, you're really setting out to succeed with when 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 you think about NGF Global and as the founder and CEO of the organization, what's the impact you want to make? What kind of impact do you want to have? So what we're looking to do is drive and establish the new standard and all things agriculture uh, to what is going to be now for farming profitability. Uh, what does that look like? And that's everything from the the business operational side of it to the logistics side of it. Which, you know, the logistic piece that we've built is a completely segment. You mentioned something about it. I'll have to go back to uh, here in just a moment. But, you know, it's establishing that standard. You know, who can you go to that has a global reach but still has that small town uh, feel? Right. You know, we, we don't see you as the, the type of client based on how big your account is. Like you, you're a handshake and we're going to look you in the eyes and uh, we're going to offer you the same opportunity that everybody's going to get. And that's the idea behind it is the global marketplace so that you now have these lines kind of of approach like available to be found by your product based on the quality. You know, that's tremendous. And for our listeners, Edwin, help them understand what it is that we're talking about. So how does the commodity essentially industry work right now? So if somebody wants to sell soybeans, what do they do? And then how are you going to change that to improve it? Yeah, so first of all, like when you think about like we we stay away from the word commodity. Okay. Man, you see the reason why we got into pulse crops, especially crops, is because we're looking to decommoditize uh, these products. So things like corn, soybeans, wheat, yeah, absolutely there's a need for it, but it's a lot of it is based on big, big, big volumes. And there's right. a lot of other – governing pieces that really dictate and drive, you know, what that, you know, what that contract is going to look like, what that futures contract, what the price is going to be for any given time of day, where our focus in Pulse Especially Crops, we, uh, this is an opportunity where the farmer's identity, their effort, their, their sweat is matched in the quality of their product. And that's why you see a much greater, uh, you know, price per bushel for any of these products compared to, you know, a commodity. Okay. So that's something that's very unique. Uh, you know, a lot of these farmers, uh, they have a lot of pride and a lot of effort and a lot of time that goes into it. And rather than just being blended and commoditized, we individualize it and it's sold based on, again, the identity. Edwin, my mind is spinning right now, and I think probably our listeners are too. And one of the things that I think about is you mentioned earlier 28 hours in a 24-hour day, right? So can the platform that NGF Global is developing, can it actually help improve time, help them get more hours in a day? Is that a possibility? Yeah, so think about not having to have these phone calls with broker after broker. Uh, one thing that we we bring to this equation, if you will, it, traditionally the farmer goes through the process, they harvest their crop, they they you know store it somewhere, or they have a a grain uh, elevator to transport it to. But they do that like they, that's all their cost, right? Where what we are doing now is 
by the push of a button, you're notified if somebody is interested in your product. And the difference is the data points, the quality behind how their product is identified. So they own the data. They did all the work. It's their farm. It's their product. They own the data. So they should see the premium in what that data brings. And that's something that's very significant. And also on both sides, not just the farmer, the buyer is just a significant part of this equation as anybody. You know, the buyer spends a lot of money to find brokers to go out and find these products. And it, it's very haphazard. It's uh, not done at the highest quality. and It doesn't necessarily meet the exact standards that they're looking for, but it's just good enough. So now you're saving time the weeks and months that go by for somebody making old, outdated, traditional phone calls, you can search through our map and our keyword locator system and find the exact component, click to purchase, and that's it. It's done. They don't even have to transport it. We do it all for them. You're getting me all excited now. So we got about five minutes left here on the podcast today. Edwin, you mentioned the platform. Where can they go to take a look at this? Or is it ready? And if it's not ready, when will it be ready? So there, we're transitioning uh, between our alpha and beta phases right now. Okay. Uh, we have a, a select number of participants that are transacting on the platform. So for commercial use, we're not you know, publicly uh, announcing that it's ready, but we're expecting uh, anywhere, give us a nice little buffer between six and nine weeks, and it's going to be ready to transition between beta and into full production grade. Is there somewhere you want people to go take a look at now, or you just want them to wait a few months and then we'll make an announcement and get that information out there? Yeah, so we put out uh, weekly notices and uh, bigger pushes on a monthly basis through our website, and you can subscribe there at uh, the www.ngf-global.com. Okay. Uh, it gives you a good breakdown of each of the verticals that we're focused in, and uh even a unique one that we're growing into, which is hemp. And uh, that's oh, something very exciting. That's really exciting for me. I know it's extremely exciting for our <laughs> listeners here on the Veterans for Cannabis podcast. Let's talk about that. Let's, I mean, dang, let's just jump right in because you know what? Got a couple minutes left, and what we'll be able to do is just tease a little bit, and then we're going to roll right into the next podcast for next week. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I can give you a, a brief overview. You know, when we looked at it, first of all, you know, when you're a company, you need to be profitable, right? And there's a big talk about what was uh, booming uh, with hemp and cannabis and things like that. And we really wanted to take a look at the numbers. And yeah, there's opportunity for good business, but would you really call it a boom? And that's where we found some significant details. And then we wanted to find out why. Why is it not booming? And the whole idea was, will our model uh, fit and bring solutions to the unique challenges that the hemp and cannabis industry is facing currently and develop new solutions and set that new standard as we grow and the hemp and cannabis industry grows? And uh, it's been an incredible opportunity for us. And uh, we've had some... Uh, the comments that we've had and the, the sheer volume of comments really doesn't do it justice. So if you could sum it up in a short sentence, because we've got a, a minute or two left here, to just tease it and what our next uh, podcast is going to be, what is it that you're looking to try to accomplish with uh, NGF Global and being in the hemp industry? You know, get away from just bad business. You know, the whole thing is we are smart agribusiness. Uh, get away from the untrust, the wild, wild west approach and actually have a safe, secure, fast and smart way to transact and do business. People want to make money and people want to buy your product because they want to make money off what they're going to make out of that product. This is exactly how to do that. And again, like I said, a very safe, secure, smart and fast way. Oh my gosh! Now you're now you're talking uh, now you're talking them crazy fun dirty words to me now. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Edwin Richardson Jr. Sir, I am so honored and appreciative for you joining us here on the Veterans for Cannabis podcast today. Founder and CEO of NGF Global. If you don't mind, what's that website again? 
www.ngf-global.com. NGF stands for Next Generation Farming Global. Awesome. So I'll tell you what, listeners, uh, we're going to do a second podcast. It'll be uh, available next week. So I'm Joshua Littrell signing off here with Edwin Richardson from NGF Global, and we will join you as you join us next week on the Veterans for Cannabis podcast. Take care. Line over there, over there. Send the word, send the word over there. That the Yanks are coming, the Yanks are coming. The drums run coming everywhere. So prepare, say a prayer. Send the word, send the word to beware. We'll be over, we're coming over, and we won't come back till it's over, over there, over.